Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we hope to get some insight on how you pick a school at the college level. My guest today is Mia Quinn, and she's a student at Colorado uh, College, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, Mia, um, where, where, did, uh, where did you go to high school? Because uh, we know the college that you went to. So where did you go to high school? I went to Princeton High School. Uh, I'm not originally from Princeton. I'm from about 20 minutes outside of Princeton. But um, I spent four years at Princeton High School. Okay, great. So um, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it freshman year? Was it senior year? How did it all begin for you? Well, I've always known that I want to go to college my entire life. Okay. In terms of thinking about actually planning on where to go, I think I seriously started to think about it toward the end of my sophomore year, but what I thought at that time changed a lot <laughs> it, it, from that time until I went to college. So what's, uh, what's the change? Give us, give us an example of what was going on. Well, and... sophomore year, I thought I wanted to play I really was convinced I wanted to play sports in college okay so I ran track and I was a soccer player so I was looking at schools that I could get into that were good at good at sports but I always put academics above sports oh. so my mom told me she said you could have them have sports help you get into the best school you can get into but don't go to a school solely for the sports because she's like your mind lasts longer than your body <laughs> there you go good yeah no, that's fantastic. But the change, well, the ch what changed is I realized maybe I don't really want to do sports in college, so that kind of opened a bigger window of schools I could look at. And um, and that change was sophomore year to junior year. I think that, that change was during junior year. Okay. The beginning of junior year. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. So now, um, Colorado College. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nowhere's near Princeton. Uh, New Jersey. Yeah. So how does one pick a school in Colorado? Um, th was there a wide variety of schools that you were looking at? Yeah, actually Colorado College is the only school I looked at that wasn't on the East Coast and partly because I thought I really wanted to stay on the East Coast. I was looking predominantly at NESCAC schools in the Northeast. Um, but my mom, my parents didn't want me to go that far unless I had family. And my mother's sister lives in Colorado. Oh. She's in Denver, which is 50 minutes from the school. Colorado Springs, right? So I was okay with her. But ever since I was in middle school, I've been skiing in Colorado every winter. So I was familiar with the place. So it wasn't a total just different place I was going to. It, yeah. I was still familiar with the area. Uh, but then all of the other schools I went to were pretty small liberal arts schools. Okay, and what do, what are some of those type of schools that you were looking at? I like, looked at- All in the area here? Well, no, I looked at Tufts, Boston College, Bucknell, I went up and visited McGill. Um, God, so many. <laughs> but uh, I was lucky enough to have my, my parents were really involved in the process in letting, bringing me to visit the schools. So mm -hmm. a lot of my friends either didn't get to visit the schools or could only visit after they got in. Right. And I think that was, if your parents have the time to do that, it's a really valuable thing. Mm -hmm. So now traveling to the schools, how many schools did you start traveling to? Were there, were there a lot of schools or did you, and when did you start doing it? Was it only on the breaks of school and then a lot in the summertime? I did, well, it was tricky because ideally you'd go during the school year because you get to see the students and everything, but then I'm not, can't take off school all the time. So I would go on weekends if it was a close place. We generally visit like two or three colleges in the same trip and do those tours, which was kind of exhausting because all the tours are pretty much the same. <laughs> and so I just went and looked at the campuses to see which ones I liked and the food if uh -huh. it was good. But um, yeah, we'd go pretty much on weekends. I didn't do a lot of summer visits because it, you can't really see the school life Gotcha. Over the summertime. So that was a big thing. It was a student life at the school, mm -hmm. right? Um, did you get to see it at all the schools that you, you went to? The student life? Yeah, student life. Yes. So at most schools, you're able to be a prospy, so a prospective student is what they call it. 
and you can have a like a student that uh, hosts you. So you have a host oh. student, so you can stay overnight with them, and they can show you around the school along with getting the tour that you would usually get. Now, now, what's what's on a tour that uh, usually the school the school is just promoting the school and just showing you different aspects of the school? Right. Generally, they'll go around the school and bring you to the main buildings and tell you what kind of classes are in those buildings, but also give you background of the school itself and kind of give you a feeling of what kind of student likes to go to the school. Like in the Colorado College um, tour, I remember them talking about all of the different intramural sports they had because my tour guide said that everyone at this school is pretty interested in the outdoors for the most part and doing outdoor activities and being active. So they're all athletic people, but you don't, something important she said that I remembered was that you don't need to be involved in athletics to be really involved in sports, which was a cool and very true thing she told me. Yeah. So that's, that was a useful... Um, was that something that else that you were looking at was, was the sports angle? Uh, mm-hmm. At the schools, like the the recreational sports, not not school right. sports as a as an organized sport. I want right. I wanted to be able. I always wanted to be able to be do, doing sports because I that's always been a part of my life. I actually ended up running track for Colorado College for um, freshman year, and then I tore my ACL sophomore year and wow. just stayed on the team, but did rehab and like got back into it kind of, and then stopped this past year, my junior year. And it really was true that there's so many things to do with your time. Because I could run, which was a plus, Mm -hmm. but then also not running, I could do intramural sports. I took an African dance class, my first dance class I've ever taken. So there's so much to offer at that school. So it was good to know that going into the school. So would you say that uh, sports is good for someone to go or sports is uh, time consuming at the school? What, What would you say about that? I think it's very time consuming and Colorado College is Division Three, so I assume D1 would be even more time consuming. Okay. But um, I think it depends on the team dynamic. Like I had trouble with it because first of all I wanted to be able to do a bunch of different things because I knew there was so much that CC had to offer and I was like, I only have four years and we'd have class nine to noon every day because we're on the block plan mm-hmm. and then we'd have track three to six. So it's hard to balance doing work. You, and I like to balance academic, social life, and athletics. And I think it is not too time consuming if you can have social life and athletics do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So if all your friends are on your team, which there's also pros and cons to that. But I found that my closest friends I, that I was making weren't on the track team. So it was uh-huh. really hard to feel that I had a balance in my life. So is it uh, organizational skills that you, you think you need at the college level to, to graduate because it, it takes so much time? Everything takes so much time? Um, in terms of like planning out your time? Yeah. I think is, that's definitely a huge, a very important skill in college and in life. But especially at Colorado College, I found that because we are on the block plan, which means we take one class for three and a half weeks. And then... It's from nine to noon, so that every day we have a semester's a week a week's worth of work if we were on the semester plan. Yeah. So it's really intense, and then we get a five day block break where we can go camping or do whatever wow. we want with our friends in the mountains or whatever you want to do. Um, so it's really important to have time management, especially on that intense schedule, because you can't you cannot procrastinate because you have three and a half weeks. Sure. To do everything. So how, now you were playing a sport. Now now you're not playing a sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the people out there that are, are always looking at that, um, what advice do you give? What advice do you give those kids that are looking at playing a sport? And then you know, is it better to go to a small school, a big school? Is, is there any difference that you found? I think there's definitely a difference. Um, big factor is how good you are at your sport because some schools just won't recruit you. Um, but I think being at a small school, it's definitely easier to balance the sports, although I don't have many friends in big schools playing sports. I have a lot of friends who play just D3, Okay. so I don't know for sure, but it is a big commitment either way. Yeah. The time factor at the school, you said, is about three hours a day, mm-hmm. um, and that's not including the, the, uh, the track meets. Right. Weekends, we have our competitions where you'll go... 
off to Kansas or <laughs> the boarding shades of Colorado and compete. Really? So, and that's every weekend? Mm -hmm. Would that be every weekend? It's probably once or twice a month when we're in season. And then in the winter, we only have like two track meets. And then in the fall, we're technically off season. So we're just training. I gotcha. So is there, is there a lot of training that goes on as well? Mm -hmm. Pretty there, much every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. And do they give you a regimen of uh, food? They give you a regimen of working out? They it, don't give us a regimen of food, but we do have, we can meet with our strength and endurance coaches. So mm -hmm. we would lift with them and work out with them. And during the off season, technically the head coach is not allowed to coach you. So the captain holds captain's practices that are optional, but. So is it, it, is it difficult to, to do uh, track at the college level? Um, I think I've been doing a sport every season for my whole life, so it was just normal. But I think that college is a time where you experience a lot of personal growth and sure. being in that strict schedule and spending a lot of time doing what I've done my whole life and loved kind of slowed that process a little bit because I was either in class doing homework or running track. And mm -hmm. I found that when I have a lot of free time or more free time and flexibility to like, explore different interests, it's been really uh, beneficial in my personal growth. And, and, and that happened this past year because mm -hmm. you didn't have track this right. year. So what, what aspects of college did you now see now that you, didn't ha you had that block of time that was allocated to track? What have you found now th the year that you didn't have that? What, what aspects did you start seeing about the school? Well, I think what helped me to transition to that was I was abroad first semester of junior year in New Zealand. So uh -huh. I didn't run track there. They didn't have even a club track team, but I still was able to work out every day. And so that made me confident that I could keep sports in my life without track. Mm. So I came back and realized that I could balance that. And I realized about the school, like we have great athletic facilities for people who don't play sports. Mm -hmm. We have full lifting and a bunch of machines. So that was something that I figured out. Also being able to control when I get exercise, when I socialize with my friends, I felt like I was more more in charge of my own schedule. Yeah. And I still did a lot of stuff. I didn't just do nothing. I told you I took an African dance class yeah. and I made new friends. I had, I, I had so much more time to do things that really opened me up to different connections and yeah, that's great. Yeah. So now um, studying abroad, that's a big thing for students. Mm -hmm. um, did you see a lot of your friends doing it? Is that why you, you went off and studied abroad? Or was this something that you had in mind when you were going into, cool, into I, school? It's something I definitely had in mind going into school. I never considered not studying abroad. Um, especially at Colorado College, a lot of kids do go abroad. I think it's kind of the nature of the kind of person that goes to Colorado College for the most part. Um, but I wanted to go somewhere that I probably wouldn't be able to go in a long time. So a lot of my friends would go to Europe. Well, that's probably the most popular destination for kids to go abroad, but I didn't want, what I wanted from my own abroad experience was to go on a lot of adventures in a new place that's mm -hmm. beautiful, which is New Zealand is all of that. And so I tailored my abroad experience to what I personally wanted. So now, a school in New Zealand, what, um, what type of classes do you take in New Zealand? So we take, I took, um, well, to give you an example of what I, I took, um, a class called Environment and Society. I took a class called Marketing and Consumption. I took Buddhism and then a class on the Maori Society, which is the culture of the indigenous peoples of wow. New Zealand. And do they take you to different places in New Zealand? Is that part of the... In no. school, or is that so up to you? I went to, well, yeah, it was all up to us to make those plans. I um, went to University of Otago, which is a pretty, especially Colorado College is almost 3,000, I think, whereas University of Otago was almost 20,000. So it was huge, and we were in lecture halls. It was the first time I ever took classes in lecture halls because at Colorado College, there's 20, 24 kids. So we were also on the semester plan in New Zealand, so it was wow. a huge switch. Um, it was just so different. It was good to be able to experience the semester plan for me to realize like I'm a block plan kind of kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. But, yeah, it was. 
So now you're going into your senior year. Uh, what are you studying and what are your aspirations after college? Well, I'm studying environmental policy and that's a mix of economics, math, ethics, environmental science, a huge major. Um, so senior year, I am finishing up my major. I have two more courses I need to take and then I'm taking writing my thesis and I'm taking some fun classes that I think would complement my major. Like I'm taking global inequality, um, speech arts for public speaking, just like right. extra things because I have those op openings in my schedule because I can still finish sure. my major. So, and then what kind of aspirations are you looking at after graduation? After graduation, I am considering going to business school. However, I'd like to work for a few years between undergraduate and graduate. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think I'd really like to go into uh, sustainable consulting with businesses to help them still gain profit, but be environmentally friendly and sustainable. Yeah. Now, that brings up a question, uh, which is uh, finance. The, is, there, is, is that a big thing when looking at colleges? Is the finance package that you're getting from the school? I think that a lot of schools offer that, and at every at, on every tour they would mention what you can get, and I, it's important to do it on time. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to deal with that going to college, so that was lucky, but a yeah. lot of kids do, and I know so many kids who take advantage of that, and it's a really great resource. Yeah, absolutely, and, that, and that's a big thing at the college level is that uh, people, people are looking at financial packages to do that. Um, what... Uh, what are the size classes that you that you see at the college level? Uh, are they small uh, at a Division three type school? Are they all small type classes, or do you get some large number type so classes? At Colorado College specifically, they cap it at I think twenty four, so you can't have more students than that. My I have other friends who go to small schools, and most of them have small classes and pretty much only small classes in their junior and senior year when they're taking upper level classes. Yeah. But from what I've heard from my friends, the entry classes, which are generally lectures, are a lot bigger. So 100 level classes and the, the general requirement classes are bigger. Okay. So now, just a little bit back in, in, into high school, um, were there any uh, schools that came to the high school? Were there any college nights, anything mm -hmm. like that? Did you go through any of that? Yes, there were, at Princeton High School, we had a like college fair. So they would have, a bunch of colleges would come and they set up tables around the room and you could go and talk to someone who was at the table, like a representative from the school, mm -hmm. or get their pamphlet or something. And do you get a lot of schools that attend those? Or is it just I a think handful? I, there, so I think it was two days long and there was probably about 20 schools at each one. Okay, all from the surrounding area or are they from all over the place? For the most part, the East Coast, because that is where a lot of people from Prison High School were interested in looking at. But then I think Colorado College did come. Hmm. I don't remember. I think the Claremont schools came. Wow. But, so not that many from the West Coast, but a lot from the East Coast. And do you get a lot of um, the guidance counselor help do you get any guidance counselor help or anything mm -hmm. well, like that? So yeah, I, ha I had a wonderful um, guidance counselor and we he, we would talk about kind of what I wanted for, in a college and what um, like how it could help me and maybe like what colleges I could get into. And it wasn't like a lot, like I have an older sister who went to an independent school and she had an individual college counselor which uh -huh. really held her hand through the process. Whereas I think Princeton High School, we got less help, but it was still, it wasn't absent of help. Yeah. And now at, at the college level, do you get any guidance at the college level as well? Is there any guidance counselors mm -hmm. or anything like that? Well, we have guidance counselors, so we have people you can go talk to about anything, but then we have our advisors. So my advisor has three students who are his, his advisors, so only three, he's also a professor. But we can go in and talk to him about picking classes, about putting, our, our classes are um, chosen by a point system, so we put points on classes and whoever has the most points in each class gets to have it. Yeah. Um, and so he'll help us with historically how many points did you have put on a class to get in, and, mm. and he's a great guy, just fun to talk to as well. 
Good. So now uh, at college, um, what's the college life like? Um, is there, you know, a lot of parents always think about the parties mm -hmm. for their kids. Um, is it is there a lot of parties or is it more you focus more on just the extracurricular activities like snowboarding or something like right. that? I think at Colorado, well, we don't have a football team, so there's no tailgating. Greek life isn't big at all, only s seven or eight percent is in Greek life. I'm in a sorority too, but it's just it's, we do philanthropy events and it's a place to meet friends and hang out, but it's really not a big thing. So we don't have any of the frat parties or the big football games or, but um, we have, it's only house parties really. There's maybe four houses that throw parties. So there's not a lot of parties, but if you want to party, you can find a party. Mm -hmm. It's not, people wouldn't say, oh, the social life, it's like a dead school. Cause it's not, <laughs> it's really fun. But, um, and, and then organized or, or recreational sports, things like that. There's a lot like that hold parties. No, no, just or, organized sports in general. Like other than just the school sports, is there a lot of extracurricular activities that kids can do? Mm -hmm. There's a ton, and I probably don't even know about all of them. But there's always people playing intramural sports. There's a bunch of oh, we have these things called adjuncts. So after our nine to noon class, you can take an afternoon class. That's what my African dance class was, and totally free. And you can take basket weaving or pot making, clay really? pot making, yeah. or dance classes, any type of dance. There's, you can do whatever you want. You can take instrument classes, voice lessons. So there's so, so much that the school offers. And, and being that it's Colorado, I'm assuming skiing, mm -hmm. snowboarding, all of that? It's that skiing and snowboarding is huge um, in the winter because we all get season passes, not all of us, but everyone who skis because it just makes so much sense because it gets paid off in like four visits or something yeah and we go up a lot Vail's my favorite mountain went up there that was the mountain I skied on the most this winter but there's also a bus that takes kids up to the mountain every weekend during while well, it's in mountains are in season so you don't mm -hmm. need a car it makes everyone being able to be included in the activity. So, so what you're saying is when you're in high school, you should, you should know if you're an outdoors type person or an indoors type person. And if you're an outdoors person, maybe you go towards a school that has those outdoor activities. Where if you're an inside person, where a majority of the schools are in cold climates, um, you know, is it something where those people go somewhere else. I mean, is, is that what you're saying? I think that it is not crucial that you know that about yourself. And sometimes you can't even know that about yourself. Everyone's on a different um, time in their life of like developing and realizing what really makes them happy or what they like. So I don't think it's important. I think it's useful to recognize things that you know make you happy. Like I knew I loved being in the outdoors. I didn't know what I really wanted to study. I didn't know where I really wanted to go. I didn't know if I wanted a big school or a little school because all my only experience was Princeton High School and my tiny middle school. <laughs> so there's no way to really know without the having experience. So I think it's good to have a feel for it, but there's no way to know until you go. Yeah, definitely. And, and um, how about travel-wise? Uh, do you come back to New Jersey quite a bit? Um, it, does that does that factor into the financials as well? Mm -hmm. I definitely think it does. It factors into the financials and thinking about how much time do you want to spend traveling of your break. So Thanksgiving break, we had I had my final on Wednesday. This was freshman year. I had my final on Wednesday, and then flew home on Wednesday. It took like a whole day. Had Thanksgiving, and then I was there for Friday and Saturday, and then I'd fly home on Sunday. So it's just in terms of time, it's not, I don't think it's really worth it. Mm -hmm. But then later on, I just started to not come home for breaks because it, it, it gets to be a pain to travel. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a big thing. Right. Yeah. So I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> um, so we're coming to the end of our show. And uh, usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give the kids that are out there that want to go to college and moms and dads? you know, want, want their kids to go to college, what advice do you want to give those, those people? I think a big, something I would have wanted to tell my high school self was to not 
feel like you really need to know exactly what you're doing because there's so many different schools out there and I think a lot of them people are able to adjust to. So whether or not you think, oh, this is the perfect place, because I didn't know what I wanted from a school. I thought the block plan was cool and I liked skiing. So I went there and some people are lucky enough to know <clears throat> exactly what they want to do <clears throat> and go into, um, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. That's why we have water. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> And they go into a specific school of, within their school, so this school of art or something, which is a blessing, but it's also like you don't get to explore everything. I have friends who've switched their majors and you just really don't need to know exactly what you're doing. I think the most important thing is just have an open mind for wherever you go. Great. Well, thank you very much yeah. for coming. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no problem. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.